I'm Dave. Thanks for checking out Kotaku Bonsai. First of all, today I want to say thank you for uh, helping us reach over 800 subscribers to the channel here. That is super exciting for us. Uh, and if you love bonsai and if you like the videos that we share and the projects that we do, uh, please like and subscribe. The channel's growing. Uh, we want to try and hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And your love and support uh, helps make that happen. Today, we're going to continue on with our Deadwood Tanuki project. I have three pieces of Deadwood that we'll be working with. And today, we're going to be concentrating on the very bottom of them and how to come up with a better idea or a better way to secure them in the pot that not only uh, keeps them secure, but also helps to preserve the life of the dead wood because ultimately whether it's 5, 10, 15 or 100 years from now the wood will rot no matter how much preservative we use. That's just the inevitable decay. So how can we push that off as long as possible knowing that the base of the dead wood is going to be under the soil level and it's going to be uh, exposed to a wet or moist environment for most of its life. If you haven't seen the other videos that I've worked on or posted about this project, go ahead and, and see those. It's in a playlist. Get yourself up to speed on the junipers that I uprooted and then which subsequently died and we removed all the foliage and we stripped them down to the dead wood and got them to the point that they are now. So today I'm going to show you the materials that I'm going to work with and hopefully we'll walk through this project and uh, come up with a better solution. So here's the materials that we'll be working with today, of course. We've got the three pieces of dead wood. I brought out some drill bits, tape measure, because we're going to do some drilling to secure these brackets to the very bottom of the dead wood pieces. Now, earlier today I went to Lowe's and I got these are two inch by two inch galvanized rust resistant corner braces or L brackets. I got these for a couple of reasons. First of all, two inches is about the size that I need on the base of each deadwood piece as a riser. And th that riser will lift it off of the bottom of the inside of the pot so that the deadwood won't sit two inches deep into a moist environment. Because I think that will accelerate the, the rot much, much faster. Uh, second reason is I have seen on other YouTube videos and channels about attaching a, a, a rock or a few rocks or bricks to the bottom of the deadwood. And I suppose that's one way to do it because brick is not going to rot over time, but that adds a significant amount of weight uh, to the piece itself. And I wanted to try to come up with a way that was a little, uh, a little lighter and a little easier to work with. So I'm going to give this a shot. These type of L brackets are galvanized, so they, they claim to be rust resistant. And if they're rust resistant, hopefully that'll give us a lot more use out of them. Now, these brackets came with these screws. And these screws are pretty tiny to me, especially given the thickness and the, the diameter of, of these pieces of deadwood. So I'm gonna forego using these and I'm gonna upgrade I had these left over from a project I did building the bonsai bench. Uh, the one is kind of behind me on the other side of the pool. It's a three-tiered display bench. And I built that a couple years ago with some reclaimed materials and some new materials. But I used these. Uh, these are exterior uh, deck bits. And they've held up quite well on the bonsai bench. So I think I'm going to use these in... Oh, not that pack. This pack. I'm going to use these instead because they're a good easily twice if not three times larger than the screws that came with the brackets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to examine the pieces at the base and we're, on this kind of project you have to think three-dimensionally about how it's going to stand upright, what's the angle, and then also, because some of these pieces, of course, are tapered, I can't just drill, I, I don't want to drill and have 
the potentially a screw pop out the side if I'm dr drilling at an angle. So you have to be very careful and think this through in three dimensions uh, in order to get the best results. So I'm going to take some markings and some measurements and I'll pick back up here in a sec and we're going to start drilling. Okay, here's our first piece. This is the one that's generally straight. And at the very bottom, I did, there was a little uh, burr here, so I, I filed that down to make this bottom as pretty straight and flat as I could. Now, if I stand it up here, this table is not perfectly level. And this, you know, certainly the plastic on top is not. But if I let this fall, if I slit, stand it upright and let it fall, it definitely wants to fall towards this side right here. And there's a little notch on that side. So I'm going to need more support on that side so that the L bracket ultimately will be sticking out kind of like this. And then I'll put three or uh, two other legs on it so it'll be kind of on a tripod of risers. And hopefully we'll be able to get that really balanced so that it stands nice and straight without tipping over. So I think we're gonna do our first, uh, I'm gonna countersink these. So with my drill, I have a very fine bit and I'm gonna drill a pilot hole before I put in the decking screw. So here we go. These decking screws are supposed to be self-tapping, self-drilling. And in my bonsai bench, they worked really well like that. But for this, this project here, I'm going to do pilot holes. Because I don't want to run the chance of splitting the wood. Um, in, on my bonsai bench, it was some reclaimed planks. So I didn't mind if they split a little bit. But I'd really like to make this one look as good as possible. So it's through the L bracket. There's a special bit that comes with these screws. Um, it's like a hex, hex head. And I'm going to try to screw this in and see what happens and hopefully it doesn't crack the wood. So there's the first one. I left a little bit of play in it before, you know, before uh, we crank it down the whole way so that I can position it as needed to make sure that this stays up straight and doesn't fall over. Here's the base. So I've got a little extra room up here. I'm going to put two other legs on and I'll make sure to get it all uh, nice and secure before we snug it down for good. So I'll get the other two done. And here we are, we've got three legs, look at that. It's standing upright, it's not tipping over. Obviously, here's my hands. And uh, I think this is a success. So this is what it looks like at the bottom. 
these don't overlap. Well, do they? They do maybe a little bit, they, they do. I'll probably change that. I'll back this one out and this one out so that these brackets don't overlap. But they're screwed in very, very tightly. The, hard, the, the wood did not split at all, so the countersink or the pilot hole I think was a really good option. But it gives us a three-legged stool. And it stands up just fine, look at that. Just like that. So now the bottom of the pot, or, or I'm sorry, the of course this will sit at the bottom of the pot. There's gonna be roots. The roots have all of this space underneath now to grow. Whereas if this was on a brick or a stone, this space would not be available for roots to grow. So I think this is gonna be a better solution, not only for preserving the dead wood for a longer period of time, but also it gives negative space for roots to grow underneath in our ultimate planting. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a few minutes and tweak this off camera. And uh, I'm gonna proceed on with the other two pieces over here. And I'll get back to you guys here in just a minute and show you what we got. Okay, our first piece. Here is the bottom. None of them are overlapping. So they're all as nice and flush to the bottom as I could get. It stands up on its own. It gives us negative space under there for roots. And it allows us multiple possibilities for where the trunk will ultimately emerge from the surface of the soil. So that's going to give us a lot more freedom than a rock would if this was a rock holding this up. That's going to prevent a lot of um, aesthetical opportunities for where the, the trunk is going to come up. So I'll be able to carve this all through here if I wanted to, this side, and, and the brackets won't encroach upon where the trunk is ultimately going to live. So I like this. I think this is a pretty good solution. I hope it really looks good at the end when, when it's all planted.
now I want to show you the finished product and I'm going to spin the camera around and show you. Hopefully I don't get copyrighted since my neighbor's blasting out uh, <laughs> some grunge. Here we go. There's the final three pieces, guys. Check that out. Standing nice and upright. Each of them on their own three-legged bracket stand. Galvanized and hopefully rust resistant. And uh, we're gonna preserve the wood. We're gonna use some lime sulfur, bleach it out, preserve it. And then we're gonna get a really nice juniper to graft onto there and get them potted. So if, I hope you like that. I've never seen anybody do this before with the bracket set up. Um, if you have, please let me know. I'd like to know. But if you also have any uh, thoughts and questions, post them below. Like and subscribe, guys. Show the love. Thanks. See you on the next one.